relationship with the Lord. And you'll do the right things the right way. And the Lord will bless you. The moment you do the right things, the right way. It's time to stay there until you grow. Stay there until you grow. Don't quit. Stay there until you grow. Whoever you are, wherever you're watching us from, you're welcome to Beacon Life Church, Nairobi, Kenya. We are committed to shining Jesus' light as we advance the glorious gospel of the kingdom. Our services are on Sunday, 10 a.m., Power Thursday, which is also our midweek prayer service at 6 p.m. You're welcome to log into our life groups, Beacon at Home, Beacon at Work. Don't you hesitate to get in touch with us for the details of the life group that is closest to you. Feel excited to join us on our social media handles to subscribe, like, comment, and follow Beacon Life Church on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Let's now celebrate the Lord with our generous giving. The Mpesa Pay Bill number is 535471. You can also give through PayPal by following the link on our website, www.beaconlifechurch.org. For cash, checks, and transfers, our bank details are displayed on the screen. Thanks a bunch for joining us today. Welcome to Beacon Life Church. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the service.
to our hearts, O oh Father. May it change us, O oh Father. May we see things, Lord Jesus, the way you see, Lord Jesus. May you turn things, Lord Jesus, in our lives, O oh Father. We pray all that, believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Second Samuel chapter 5. Uh, David is dealing on a mess that was brought by Saul. The ark was taken by the Philippines because of the mess of the David. David took the ark lightly, the ark of the Lord lightly, and when they, go, when they went for fighting with the Philippines, they took it, the Philistines, sorry, they took it from him. They took it from him, and they went to put as part of their gods. They had a god called uh, Dagon, and they put, uh, Dagon was like standing somewhere like here, and the ark of the Lord was somewhere here, and they, they used to arrange their gods. You are in the another gods, the god of rain, god of god of who, god of who, god of who. So the ark of the Lord was part of the other gods, and Dagon was standing like in the middle. And one night, the Dagon fell down. The Philistines came and said, they give the excuses. Uh, I think someone who's supposed to put Dagon properly never you didn't put him properly. That's the reason he. That's the reason he fell down. Excuses, the same excuse we do when you do the wrong thing instead of doing the right thing. Oh, if the police could have angechiko ikitukidoga ni eche tuniende. So, make judgments araka araka wende. Yeah. The second day they woke up, now they gone, the head was off, the hands was off, the legs was off. And that's where it came, it came down to them like, okay, there's something happening here that is really not good. But for me, I think the Lord was giving them a chance to, to change. But of course, they gave excuses. 
they said again, I, I think uh, they're going to spoot in a bad way. But let's, the, the best thing we can do, uh, let's push the thing, let's remove the Lord from this place and take him to another town. First, he was in a town called Ashton. And the Lord, uh, the ark of the Lord was taken to another town called Gath. And there it brought havoc. It brought all the sickness. It brought everything bad. And they decided, no, let's push it again to another town called Ekron. It bring a lot of problems. And they said, no, we don't need this ark. I think we brought some problems into our side. And this story is really familiar when, uh, when the Israelites wanted to come out of Egypt. These are the sickness they uh, the Egyptians, these are basically the things they felt. They felt, David, uh, Moses came to them and asked them, please let my people live. Let my people go. And Pharaoh said no. And things started beating them. Things basically starting beating them because they, they never allowed the Israelites to come out of the Egypt. The same thing the Philistines were feeling because they took the ark of the Lord out of the Philistines feel because they took the ark of the Lord out of Israel. They took the ark of the Lord and they brought it where it's not basically. It was like a strange place for them. They had other gods that they were, they were worshipping. They had other, the way they are doing things in the world. They had their ways. So the ark of the Lord was not comfortable there. The ark of the Lord was uh, it's like you're mixing uh, black and white. You're mixing things that are not they cannot dwell in the same place. Our Lord is very, uh, what's the word? He's very je jealous. He's very jealous. You cannot put him on other things. You cannot worship him, worship him and then worship other things. He was very jealous. He wanted to be worshipped alone. But they never understood that. They really never understood that. The last time, the, the last thing, they, t they took the ark to a town called Beth Shemem. Beth Shemem is basically on the border of... Uh, the Philistines and Israel. So they decided to take it there. But they took it in a strange way. You need to read that story. They, they took a calf, uh, uh, um, a cow who had a calf, and they said, on a new cart, they said, if, if, this, if this ark of the Lord is carried on this cart, uh, in this cart, with this uh, kettle, which have already had calves, you know the cows, they basically, basically the way they behave. The moment they have calves, uh, you cannot separate them from their calves. But they said, if we put this calf, uh, if we put this ark of the Lord here, and it goes straight to the Israels, we'll know that the Lord is, has decided for this ark to get out of us, and we'll be, we'll basically, we'll be out of these problems. They call it a problem. They call it a problem. We're out of this problem. So they did that, and they, uh, basically the cow, uh, the cattle in this case, went straight and forgot about their calves. And they celebrated. The, and the interesting thing they did, the way Egyptians did, when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, they were given gold and all those things they were given. So this, they did, did the same thing. I think they went back to the, uh, to the Bible, their own Bible, and they did some Bible study. And they sent some men to do some Bible study. So what do we do here? And someone referred them to basically what Pharaoh did in Egypt. They said, we send these guys away and we give them gold, we give them silver and everything. So they put everything on that uh, cut, the new cut, and it went away with them properly. And it, when it reached a town called Beth Shemem, this is where the Israelites were. They saw the ark of the Lord, they were very happy. They were celebrating and everything. And one thing they forgot, this was the ark of the Lord. I think they became familiar with that. Have you ever become familiar with the Lord that now you bring strange things? You become familiar with the Lord that you even forget. You become familiar with the Lord and you start doing uh, the wrong things now instead of doing things the way the Lord is supposed to uh, telling you to do things. You just become familiar with the Lord and you forget how you're supposed to run yourself when the Lord is around. That is basically what the Israelites did in this case. They came, and when they're opening, celebrating, they took the uh, uh, cow, they offered a uh, sacrifice, and they touched the ark. Let me tell you, the ark killed around 50,000 people. 50,000 people in one 
In like a minute, 50,000 people are dead. And they were also afraid what has happened here. And now they took the ark to a guy called Abina, Abinadad. And it stayed there for 20 years. 20 good years. And David now was trying to take it out of the house of Abinadad. Now we are, we are together. We are together. For those who didn't know the story, you are together. Now you understand. Now this, this is where the David is coming to basically pick the ark. All this mess, you remember all this mess was made by Saul. Because Saul became familiar with the Lord. He went to fight with the ark, not, not really believing about the Lord. And he was killed in that battle. And that's how the ark was taken away. Now we are good? Yeah. Now, uh, chapter 6 says, uh, um, uh, uh, chapter 6 verse 1. Let me just repeat it. David again brought together all the able young men of Israel. 30,000. Those are a lot of people. 30,000. And all uh, and all his men went to Balal in Judah to bring up from there the ark of the Lord, which is called by the name uh, of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between uh, the cherubim and the ark. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadad. It is very strange that you know the Philistines put the ark on, uh, on the new cut. And David was doing the same, same thing. Same, same thing. I don't know, he never learned or what. He was doing the same, same thing. Then I remembered. You know David stayed with the Philistines. When he was escaping away from Saul, he stayed with the Philistines. So he was doing some things the way Philistines were doing it. And he thought, okay, if I put a new ark, this is if I, if I bring a new ark and carry the, uh, if I bring the new cart and carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord will be impressed. Is it true or not? If I bring a new strange thing, basically, that is the same things we shall do. Yeah. If I bring something new, we, we love, we love uh, our technology. It's coming. It's coming. Even the church are uh, embracing technology. But one thing the Bible reminds us, do not forsake the gathering of. Do not. The gathering of. As long as we have uh, online church and everything. Never forget that. Never ever forget that. Those are the new things. There are a lot of new things that we surely do. Because we copy from the world. And this is basically what David did. He copied what Philistines were doing. And he came and did the same thing. Let's continue. Uh, they said the ark of God in the new cart and brought it from the house of Binadad, which was on the hill. Uzza and Ohio, sons of Abinadad, were building the new cart with the ark of the God on it. And Ohio was walking in front of it. David and all of the Israelites were celebrating with all the might, uh, all the might before the Lord with uh, casters, harps, uh, high res, temperate sisters, and uh, sibrans. When the ark came on the threshing floor of Uzza, uh, uh, the French flood of uh, uh, Nakon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because of the oxen, uh, oxen stumble. The Lord anger burned against uh, uh, Uzzah uh, because of his irrelevant act. Therefore, the God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of the Lord. Uzzah were the sons of Abinadad. Uzzah and uh, Ohio, they were the sons of Abinadad. These guys stayed with the ark in their house for 20 years. 20 good years. They stayed with the ark. And they became familiar with it. They really became familiar with it. Is the way you're serving the Lord. You're serving against, uh, um, uh, uh, you're serving on the leadership of our party. Then we just become familiar with it. And you bring the things that you that previously you had left in the, uh, in the world, then you come with them. So Uza and uh, his brother became familiar. And this basically happens with, uh, um, I'm a pastor's kid, by the way. This happens with the pastor's children. Because you stay around your, that, that environment until you become familiar with it. You just stay around. Sometimes when you're serving, 
in different departments, you stay there, then you become familiar with it. That nothing changes your life, nothing touches you, but because you are just familiar with it. You stay in a while that you're not even growing because you're familiar with it. If you're in a department and you're not growing, that means you're familiar with it. If you're coming to church and nothing is changing in your life, it means you're familiar with it. You're familiar with the things, uh, the way things are being done. So it, for you, it becomes a routine. This is basically what Uza and Ohio did. They were familiar with whatever uh, um, um, the ark of the Lord was doing. And it stayed 20 years. Imagine staying 20 years somewhere and it doesn't change you. Down there, I'll, 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 we'll, we'll reach there. Down there, there's a guy called Obed. Obed just stayed with the ark three months and a lot of things happened to, to him. But this guy stayed with the ark 20 good years. I don't know if it was, it was locked in a room somewhere and they were told the way parents tell, uh, tell their kids we really don't know. I don't know who to blame. Is it I've been a dad because he didn't uh, teach them on the same thing. We, we don't know exactly what happened. But staying in a place for 20 years you're not changing. Staying in a marriage for 20 years but you still behave like you're a single guy it's very, it's very, uh, it's very worrying. It's very worrying. And when, when it, uh, when the ark killed Uzzah, uh, eight says, then David was very hungry because the Lord wrath had broken out against Uzzah, and on this day that place was called Perez Uzzah. David was as much as he was hungry, he was also afraid. He was like. Okay, now how do we move this thing? How do we, do we really move this thing? How do we really move this thing? But now David reminded, <laughs> remembered, he was coming to take this thing as a king. But he was supposed to come and take this thing as a priest. And he went back to, I think he went back to Bible study the same way. He went back to Bible study. He remembered, okay, what did Moses did? How was this ark built? What did Moses did? That's when he came to Numbers chapter 4. Let's go to Numbers 4. Numbers 4. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, just continue. Uh, take a census of the Kohathites, branch of Levites, uh, by their clans and their families. Count all of them. Uh, from 30 to 50 years of age, who came to serve in the work in the tent of a meeting. This is the work of the Kohathites in the tent of the meeting. Care for the most of the holy, to care for the most of the holy things. When the camp is to move, Aaron and his sons are to go in and take down the shielding uh, curtains and cover the ark of the uh, of the testimony with it. This is basically an explanation how to deal with the ark. Continue. Then uh, um, seven. Over the table of the presence, uh, they were to spread a blue cloth and put on it the plates, dishes, and bowls, jars for drinks, drinking offering, and the bread that is continually there uh, is to remain on it. Eight. Over this, they are to spread as cattle clothes, cover that with hides of sea, uh, of sea cows and put it, uh, put its poles in place. Nine, they are to take a blue cloth and cover the lampstand that is for the light together with eight lambs, uh, its weak timber, uh, timber rods and strays, and all of its jar for the oil used to uh, supply it. Then they are to wrap it uh, all it uh, accessories in covering with hides of the sea cows and put it on a uh, cutting frame. Uh, 11. Over the gold altar, there are to spread a blue cloth and cover that with hides of sea, ca uh, sea cows and put it put its poles in place. They explain basically how to deal with the ark. Uh, just think, uh, jump to, I'm, I'm looking for a place they are carrying the ark. It's supposed to carry the ark. It should be in uh, 14. Just try 14. Then they are to place it on the utensil used ministering. Uh, 16. 
as the sons of Aaron the priest, is to have the oil in the light of the fragrance, uh, essence, the regular grains offering, anointing oil, is to be uh, in charge of the entire uh, tabacle and everything in it, including its oily uh, finishing and uh, articles. The basic, that is who is supposed to charge. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, uh, see that the Hokata tribe's clan not cut off from the Levites. Hokata is basically the ones supposed to deal with the ark. Is it 20? Uh, try 22. I'm looking for a place uh, on how to carry the ark. There's, a, there's an instruction on basically how to carry the ark. If you read down there, they were told that men, there were men on, a uh, on the uh, tribes of the Levites who were supposed to carry the ark on their shoulders. So the ark was not supposed to carry on a cart. So Moses went back to Bible study. He went back and researched for a while. And he went back to Numbers 4, 13. From 29, 429, count on the uh, Merarites by their clans and their families, 30. Count all the men from their 30 to 50 years of age who can come to serve in the work of the tent of the meeting. This is a duty, uh, the performance uh, service to the tent of the meeting to carry the frames of the tablo uh, tablet. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's crossbar post and bases as well as the post of the surrounding courtyard with their base, tents, pegs, ropes, and their equipments and everything related to their issues. Assign to each man their, sp their specific things he is to carry. So all the things are supposed to, to be carried physically. This is to serve the uh, meritized clans as they work on the tents of the meeting under the direction of the uh, Atmar, sons of Aaron, and the priest. Uh, if you read down, you'll, you'll f basically find this, uh, the ark was supposed to be carried on the shoulder. The way you carry, uh, I think it's in Uganda, the kings are carried on the shoulder with men. So the ark was supposed to be carried. The reason it was being carried, um, we, we were just, uh, we are just um, uh, on Wednesday, we are talking about the, the spirit of the Lord. We are saying the spirit of the Lord is a person. Uh, someone was asking, is a person. So this reminded me of the same scripture. Because the Lord is supposed to, to be carried with a person. Because the spirit of the Lord lives in us. He doesn't live in, uh, in animals or in cats. He lives in us. So the Lord is to be carried by, by human beings, by us. So the Lord was reminding David through Numbers 4 that Moses was told uh, instruction. He was given instruction. The Lord used to give uh, people instructions. Even Noah was given instructions on when he was building the ark. He was given specific instructions. So this one, the Lord gave um, David instruction on how the ark was to be carried. And it, it, it made David go back to, um, uh, to Numbers 4 to basically understand. And if you look at 1 Corinthians 15, that is where David came back to his senses. F F Corinthians, um, uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 says, after David had constructed... Uh, had constructed buildings from himself in the city. He prepared a place of the ark of the Lord and pitches a tent of it. Then David said, no one but the Levites, this, this is basically when he came back to his senses, no one but the Levites may carry the ark of God because the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to minister before, before, before him forever. Which these, uh, we don't know the period uh, uh, where the ark stayed in the house of the, uh, basically three months. It's indicated three months. So these three months David took to basically pray to the Lord, ask uh, the other um, leaders who are there, the Levites who are there, the priests who are there, because at this time Samuel was already dead. So he had to consult basically, what do we do in this thing? Yeah. So he came again. So this was round two after, after Husa is dead. He came again in round two. Nine says, David was afraid of the Lord that day. How can they, I'm, I'm in, uh, I'm in um, uh, Second Samuel 6 from 9. David was afraid of the Lord and he said, how can, uh, how can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? He was not willing to take the ark of the Lord 
to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed, the, the Gittites. And the ark of the Lord remains in the house of the Obed, uh, the Gittites, for three months. And the Lord blessed him and, the, uh, and his entire household. Who was Obed? Have you ever asked yourself, who was this Obed? <laughs> the ark stayed in Abinadad's house for 20 years. Nothing happened. But there's this, this guy called Obed. I was wondering, okay, who is this Obed? When you go back to the First Corinthians uh, 15, um, 15, First Chronicles, First Chronicles 15, 19, 15, 19. When they are carrying the ark, Obed was one of the people that was part of the guys who were carrying the ark. Obed was there. So that means Obed was a, a Levite. He came from the, of, uh, from the family of the Levites. And when Obed uh, had this, basically, this ark was uh, uh, um, uh, bringing problems to people, he said, he welcomed it to his house. Everyone was afraid. It's like you're carrying something. Or a person who was bringing havoc. Unasema, uneza host to him to, ah, pana mimi si ezi host to ujama. Benyame iba pale, ah, 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 ah. Uyu anaibaga, uyu, ah, ah, apana. Uyu uneza most, ah, 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 ah. Benyame, fanya hausel poka hepa pungine, ah, si ezi kana ye, apa kwangu, yes. Because they didn't know this person very well. Obed knew from the livers, Obed was, a, was one of the priests. And he understood the ark very well. He really understood the ark very well. And he knew how to handle it. And he took it. And for the three months, he was blessed until, I think David got jealous. David got jealous. Like this person was, my goodness. This guy was really blessed for three months. Three months. At time, people ask, why are you blessed? Why are things are going through away? They don't know because you're serving the house of the Lord. Because the Lord that is in, within you, that's the reason you are receiving these blessings. People now are complaining about uh, the economy. Things are bad. Things are this way. Things are that way. But the other people are being blessed. Really being blessed. At this time, when you are complaining, these are the time that they are doing. Uh, they are doing mighty things. Yesterday, I was just with my friend uh, at a place called Katani. He was breaking the ground to start building his house. When people are struggling with rents and everything, for him, he's breaking the ground to build his house. And we are there to dedicate the place. Thank you for being an elder, so I was called to, <laughs> to pour oil <laughs> on the ground here. Yeah. So we are called to, bl uh, to, 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 uh, to bless a place that uh, when other people are crying. And basically, that's what the Lord does to you. When you go to him and you do the right things the right way, he blesses you. When you wait on him, he blesses you very well. He blesses you very, very well. Because you waited on him and you did the right things the right way. The right things the right way. And this basically encourages, uh, uh, if you go down, we'll, we'll, we'll go there. It basically encourages you in terms of uh, if, you, if you tried something, and it failed. You ask yourself, why did it fail? Did I consult the Lord to start this thing? Did I really consult the Lord on the first time to start this thing? That's where you need to come back. Take yourself back to, David took himself back to Numbers 4. On these things, how basically these things are being done. To Numbers 4. So you need to take yourself back. And try it again. Try it again, but try it with the Lord now. This time, try it again and try it with the Lord. If your marriage is, is not doing well, it's basically not doing well, this is the right time to come back and ask the Lord, okay, what, did I start with you? Did I really uh, uh, start the foundation with you? Because sometimes you have cracks in the house, but the problem is not the cracks. The problem is the foundation. Yes. Deal with the foundation, the cracks will stop because you'll be you keep on calling the fundies now at a chapter to plaster that the cracks will still remain yeah uta pelekana siju mombasa arudi bibi ni ule ule 
Utampeleka wapi apande ndege si ngapi? The wife will be still the same. The husband the same thing. Until you deal with the foundation, that's where you can sort out the cracks. Amen. So Obed was blessed for uh, uh, after three months. If um, we we read the old chapter, let's go to uh, sixteen. This basically when uh, um, the ark was already passed and everything. Uh, sixteen says, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David. Uh, Michael David. Uh, um, Let's go to chap- uh, back to 12. Now David was, uh, uh, now King David was told, the Lord has blessed the house of, uh, household of Obed and everything he has because, the ark of the, uh, uh, because of the ark of the God. So David went to bring up the ark of God with the house, uh, from the house of Obed or the city of David with rejoicing. Now he was rejoicing because he knew the secret. He didn't know the secret <laughs> three months ago. <laughs> now he, he knows the secret. Yeah. 15. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken uh, six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Six steps. I don't know if my six steps are, if I do <laughs> from here, one, two, three, six steps there, there's a bull here. A big bull. Six steps, another th- big bull. So it was, it was really messy. It was a messy place. After six steps, a bull. Like you, you were celebrating even taking six steps. It was a celebration. A six step, a bull being. Another step, a bull. Another step is from here to the toilet. I think those are like six bulls and a calf. The place was really messy. It meant the Lord, he knew the secret. He basically knew the secrets. He knew the things to sacrifice. For you to get the ark of the Lord, for you to get uh, the Lord into your heart, there are things you need to sacrifice. There are people you need to let go. For you to get hold of the Lord and the Lord to work on you, there are things you need to let go in your life. For everything to work in your family, you know, there are some things. In this case, Saul was the one who made this mess. But in your family, you know, there's an uncle, an auntie who made a mess that you guys are dealing with it right now. There's a mess that was made with somewhere in your family. And you're dealing with it right now. People usually joke. They say, when my father, my grandfather was, other people, grandfathers were buying land. My grandfather was somewhere. Instead of buying land, say people have lands in Kiambu. So land is not an issue. Yes. So there are other messes that were made even with our ancestral families, with our families here. Other marriages not, we find other marriages are not working right now because of the mess that was made with an uncle or an auntie somewhere and you don't even know about it. You need to make these sacrifices, whatever David was doing. He knew he has to do some sacrifice. After, after reading Psalms 4, he knew he has to. He had to, he had to make some sacrifices going on. Wearing a linen ethod, David was dancing before the Lord with all the might. With all of his might. While he and all the Israelites were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and sounds of trumpets. And he was not doing it uh, sorrowful. He was celebrating while he was doing it. He was sacrificing while he was doing it. The people sacrifice, but you'll see. <laughs> Whenever they sacrifice, you'll see it in their face. You don't know who Alipiana Narosafi? Is it a sacrifice? Ama? Is it a, a guilt offering? There's some things. <laughs> they look like a guilt offering. Like what an impetu. Nimpea ende. There's a there's a part in the Bible that they says there's a king who res, who, who um there's a king who, uh, who gave a judgment to a lady because the, the woman, because the woman was pestering her every now and then because of the pestering. So there are things you shall give people because hey, we is a miangu ita pigo to watch an imtumia your punch because my message is tashindaba. Yeah. So David was not doing that. David was doing it willingly. 
Yeah, 16. And the ark of the Lord was entering the city. Uh, Mika, Mika, sometimes people call him Michelle or Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from the window. And when he saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised her in her heart. She despised her in her heart. Have you ever asked yourself why did Mika despise David? Have you ever asked yourself why? Let me just take you back. Today is uh, uh, we are doing some Bible study now. <laughs> Let me take you back. Uh, David was supposed to marry a lady called a sister to Michael. Uh, her name was um, what's her name? Merab. Merab was the older sister to Michael. And um, uh, when when David came in, Saul told him, uh, no, you can't marry this one because I've already given this one to another person. So you'll marry Michael. Now Michael loved David. But Michael was marrying David so that Saul can use her to become uh, a FBI. But Michael really loved David. And when, when, when Saul came to kill David, Michael was the one that, Michael and Jonathan was the one that helped David to escape. So this lady really loved, loved David. But David, David escaped like, I think he was a boy when he was escaping. And he stayed somewhere else, David. And he married the other six women. Then he came back. But Michael, unajua alikuwa nile fantasy. This is my, the love of my life, nini, nini. But when he's coming back to Jerusalem, he's not even looking for me. Imagine here, but anacheza, cheza na? Si was chan. He had... He had 30 million people that he was, he was dancing with the ark. Instead of coming and hugging me, but I said, six years, man, how many miss? Eh? I'm supposed to be priority. Mikael was a baby girl. Tretaka say baby girl. Mikael was a baby girl. He stayed in the house of the king. And a Jew when a king supposed to run themselves. King was not supposed to mix with other people. He saw his dad the way he was running himself. He saw his dad the way he was uh, even dancing. Sometimes he said, I don't know what You see? That basically what that is what was Saul was doing. And Mikhail saw that. Mikhail saw that basically. And this is David, David coming in. <laughs> And a chesa, a metota nguo, like, hey, this is a guy who's supposed to come to me and embrace me and embini me kumi. Sachana na wato kusev. I'm the one who saved you. I'm the one who alimtoko dirisha ukoka. It's like holding the uh, rope for you to escape from being killed from with my dad. Yeah. So 17, let's go back. We'll come back to Mika. <laughs> they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in his place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed uh, a band offering. Excuse me. Band offering and fellowship offering before the Lord. After he had finished sacrificing the band offering and uh, uh, fellowship offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. And he gave them a loaf of bread and a cake uh, and a cake for dates and a uh, cake for reason for each person in the whole crowd of Israel, both men and women. And all the people went on their home. You wonder why David was blessing the people. <laughs> That's when he realized he was a priest and still a... He was a priest and still a... Yes. Pastor always reminds us of the same thing and the Bible still. Uh, as much as I'm the husband, I'm still a priest of my house here. Yes. Why was David... Blessing people. He was still a priest. This is another story of Melchizedek and all those stories. Yeah, But uh, there's, a, there's a verse that reminds us David had sons that were priests. So David says, if my sons are priests, see at a mini priest. Sendio. If my sons are priests, at a mini priest. So that's the reason. He, he blessed people. But that's another story for another day. On 20, when David returned home from the, to bless his house, Michael, daughter of Saul, came out to him and said, how the king of Israel is disgusting himself today, going around half naked, 
in full view of the slave girls, of his servants, as any vulgar fellow would. As in six years, Jakuona, and I endu, and Nikaribisha Kanyumba. Really, really. Proverbs 15 tells us, Proverbs 15 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath. A gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh one stirs up hunger. So I think I'll consider this David. There's a verse in the Bible in Ikisimona Kiswaili Dumbaya. Titu Tatu Tisa. Titus 3 9. Titus 3 9. I think David Ali Tupa to you. Ange Tupa you Titus 3 9. When it says in Kiswahili, it's so. I think Muslim, but then Muslims usually do that when they are. When they are uh, if you've never read that, please go. Titus 3 9. Kiswahili into Titu Tatu Tisa. Yeah. Now, when they are doing it in Kiswahili, they usually say, but avoid foolish conversation. Wachi apu. Then they don't go. <laughs> They don't continue. <laughs> this is basically what David uh, used. And he responded. David said to Mikael, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father yeah. or anyone from his house when he appointed me the ruler over the Lord's people. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will, be, uh, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become more, even more, and if I than this, as in the two and go, I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slaves, girls, you spoke of, I will be held in honor. I'll be held in honor. Because he, kn he knew the secret. <laughs> I'll go on a ground to you. <laughs> he knew the secret very, very well. Yeah. The way he responded, is imagine or respond here as a husband, you responded to your wife that way. But I'll impair Tito Tatutisa on the same thing. Mikala missed a moment of being blessed. He missed a moment of uh, starting another generation with David. Because verse 3 says, and Michael, a daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. You think what happened? He refused. They never shared a bedroom with, <laughs> with David. <laughs> that is the fact. Sometimes we look at it like uh, the Lord never blessed the womb. But it's not the same case. It is not the same case. David never David never went to that side with Yapisha. <laughs> Sometimes you miss a blessing because of that. You miss your blessing because, because of your mouth. You miss your blessing because this are, is these a are moment David could have started another family with him. And Solomon could have even come. The next king could have come from Michael. But, he, but she missed it. She missed it because she was full of, uh, we're talking about uh, hatred. She was full of hatred. Because verse 16 says, he despised him. Dis you know, despise me. It's a big word. Despise. Nikisemana, despise in Kiswahili ni? Kudarau. Yes. Kudarau. As in, he despised David. We don't know what, you never know what, uh, what happened to the love that they felt six years ago. But Alim despised. And Michal, as the wife of David, could have been with David dancing, coming into the temple. She could have been the David dancing. But because of her hatred, you know hatred can make you do some weird things. Because she hated David and she forgot what, what they were doing. It was basically the ark of the Lord they were carrying. He forgot that. He forgot that. How many people don't come to church because you hate someone? And you forgot the reason you're coming to church is to glorify the Lord. But your hatred is, carry, uh, is making you miss the glory of the Lord. Your hatred is making you uh, miss an opportunity that you're supposed, to be, uh, you're supposed to take in your hand. Your hatred is making you miss 
a, a time that the Lord can bless you. And you decide because, I'm hit, uh, because of the hatred you do other things. And this is basically what Mikael did. Mikael did the same, same thing because of hatred. And this morning I'm just reminding you, don't, don't allow your hate, don't allow your despise of other people or other things to make you miss the glory of the Lord, to make you miss the blessing of the Lord, to make you miss the blessing of the Lord. Remember to do the right thing the right way. The right thing the right way. Rem even if you do it the wrong way, the same uh, way uh, Sarah did. Sarah was blessed. She was told you're going to get a son. But she decided to kutafta mpango kando. She decided to do things her own way. It was the right thing. But she did it the wrong way. She could have waited on the Lord. And many times we do the same thing. We do a lot of the same things. And we decide to do things our own way. To conclude, I just want to read you a verse from a, a guy, um, um, uh, a statement says, saying, um, the book I'm reading says, uh, today we don't have to travel a specific place to know the presence of the Lord or to have a relationship with the Lord. We as believers, all we have is the Holy Spirit within us. But it is up to each one of us to start up that desire to seek out our own relationship with God. Our Father is the right way. The Father desire for us is to have a relationship with him. He awaits patiently for his sons and daughters to seek him out and to have an individual relationship with him. Remember to have a relationship with the Lord and you'll never miss opportunities like this. You'll never, opportuni you'll never miss opportunities like Mika did. You will do the right things the right way. And the Lord will bless you. The moment you do the right things, the right way. Decide to stay there until you grow. Stay there until you grow. Don't quit. Stay there until you grow. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word, oh, Father. We thank you, Lord, that uh, it may touch people's heart, oh, Father. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we may do the right thing, Lord Jesus, the right way, oh, Father. We may be ready, Lord, to sacrifice, O oh Father, as David sacrificed, O oh Father. May we be ready, O oh Father, to change our hearts, O oh Father. May you not let bitterness or oh heart, Lord Jesus, and make us miss your glory, O oh Father. Make us miss your blessings, Jehovah. We honor you, Lord Jesus, and we glorify your holy name. We pray all that believing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.